This is a very important rule. This is, a very, this is one of the key rules. The stock doesn't know you own it. <laughs> Remember that. You could be a miserable person. You could have, uh, you know, never helped anybody, never done anything right, had 67 spouses, never done anything right. If you owned Coca-Cola the last 50 years, it's gone up 300-fold. Now, the, what I'd like to talk about is what I call the 10 most dangerous things uh, people say about stocks. Uh, uh, here's a good one. If it's gone down this much already, it can't go any lower. Uh, I remember when Polaroid went from 140 to about 107, and people said, if you ever get Polaroid under 100, you've got to buy it. You just back up the truck, buy the stock. You know. uh, Stock could get to 110, then rally, you know, fall 103, you go 112, go 105. They said, gets under 100, buy Polaroid. Polaroid broke 100, people started buying it, and within nine months, the stock was 18. Uh, I saw the same thing with Avon products. So just saying, you, you know, it's gone down this far, you know, how much lower? I mean, it's crazy, but, you know, it can keep going. In fact, I tried this out. Kaiser Industries, I was a new analyst at Fidelity. And we were about to buy the biggest block ever at Kaiser Industries. The stock had gone from 29 to 17. We we're about to buy the largest block ever in the history of the American Stock Exchange. We bought, I don't know, 10 or 15 million shares. At 15 and three quarters, I said, my God, the stock's gone from 29 to 17. How much lower can it go? So we bought this enormous block at 15 and three quarters. So I called my mother and I said, Mom, I guess the stock at Kaiser Industries is 10. So about three months later, I said, you ought to buy this. It's gone from 29 to 10. How much lower can it go? Well, it went to nine, it went to eight, it went to seven, it went to six, it went to five, it went to four. Now, fortunately, this happened very rapidly, or I'd be working at the stop and shop uh, bag and behind the line <laughs> instead of Fidelity. So fortunately, this was compressed in only about six months. So I had to go to the fund manager and say, I was a little bit early on this at 15 and three quarters, it, uh, <laughs> but it, uh, we call this premature in the business. The, uh, uh, it had a correction, which you know is a euphemism for losing a lot of money rapidly at the, uh, uh, <laughs> So I said, let's check this again. The stock's four. They own 45% of Kaiser Aluminum. They own 59% of Kaiser Steel. They own 38% of Kaiser Cement. They own all of Kaiser Electronics, all of Kaiser Broadcasting, which had seven TV sets. They own Jeep. They had Kaiser Fiberglass. They had about Kaiser Santa Gravel. They had a bunch of other Kaisers. And they had no debt. Now, in this room, because I know Freeman Billings is very interested in financial stocks, no one's ever gone bankrupt without any debt. Now, that would take a real, I think you have to give some kind of distinguished service award to somebody who did that. <laughs> the, uh, but they had no debt. And I said, it's not going to go to zero. You know, I was wrong when I said it can't go below 15. So we hung on. And within three years, they gave out the shares in Kaiser Steel, gave out the shares in Kaiser Cement, gave out the shares in Kaiser Steel and Aluminum. And they sold off all the businesses. You got about $55 a share. But if you didn't know the story, and the stock went from 15 to 11, and you're just saying, how much lower can it go? When it went to 9, went to 8, you'd, you would have gone. So you can't just say it can't go any lower. Because I saw Taco Bell go from 14 to 1 in 1974, and they had no debt and making 60 cents a share. Uh, there's a corollary to that that's even more dangerous. If it's gone this high already, how can it possibly go lower? Uh, higher, sorry. That. Philip Morris adjusted for splits uh, sold for 12 cents in 1951. And then it goes to 60 cents in 1961. So it goes up fivefold, and you say to yourself, how much, this, it never sold for that, but just for splits, you say, how much higher can this go? It's gone up fivefold. They missed the power of Marlboro. They missed the, there's 220 countries in the world. They missed the cash flow of the company. They missed everything. This stock was a hundred bagger after going up fivefold. But people sold it just saying, how much higher can it go? Can't go any higher. They did the same at Home Depot. They did the same with Toys R Us. I did the same thing with Toys R Us. Just saying it can't go any higher, it's gone this much already, that's very dangerous, and don't, don't use that one. And uh, I, it's a very bad thing to do. Eventually, they always come back. Here's another one that sucks. Uh, <laughs> that's a technical stock market term we just use only in the stock market. The, uh, uh, RCA just about got back to its 1929 price, was backed out by GE. Uh, Manville never came back, International Harvester, even with its name changed and adjusted for splits, hasn't got all the way back yet, Western Union. Double knits, remember those wonderful things, uh, floppy disks? They don't have to come back. But they say eventually they always come back. Uh, not true. Uh, here's a great one. It's $3. How much can I lose? 
this is a great one. You see, I, I get, get out, this is, I don't have a computer and I can't do uh, high level math, but uh, just do this one. So let's say you buy, your neighbor buys $10,000 of his stock at 50, and the stock's now at three, and you put $25,000 in at three, if it goes to zero, who loses the most? <laughs> a lot of people cannot answer this question, you know. <laughs> the, uh, I mean, if you put a billion in at three, you can lose a billion, if, you know. I mean, they blow taps on lots of companies every year, you know, you just have, they can go to zero. Uh, the, uh, here's a good one that helped me a lot. It's always darkest before the dawn. Uh, the, uh, this business is terrible. It's awful. You ought to buy the group. This is not a good way of making money. It, uh, the, uh, here's one you're probably talking about before lunch, uh, freight car deliveries. Uh, 1979, there was 96,000 freight cars delivered in the United States. Two years later, it fell to 45,000, the lowest in 23 years. It goes from 96,000 to 45,000. People say business is awful, it's horrible, pathetic. Then it falls to 25,000. They say, just load up. There's about 15 opportunities to lose money. There's about 15 suppliers of freight cars, 15 manufacturers. Business was awful. Well, last year we shipped 7,000 freight cars in the United States. The business just continued to be miserable. And uh, I'll give you one that's even, there's even greater opportunity to lose money on, uh, the energy services industry. This, we all had a great opportunity to get our heads handed to us. Uh, in 1982, there was 11,000 of those oil rigs drilling left, you know, drilling those holes all over Oklahoma and Texas and Colorado. We used to have the rig count every week. And the rig count fell from 11,000 in 82 to 6,083. Then fell a little bit lower in 84. And there's hundreds and hundreds of companies here. Companies that made the muds and did the downhole stuff, the fracturing companies, the the, the well companies, all the measuring companies, the Chambages, the bid companies, lots of opportunities to lose money here. There's an equal opportunity, op opportunity here for serious losses. And the people said, listen, the business is terrible. Let's buy these groups. Well, the rig count was only 1,000 three years ago. So it went from 11,000 to 6,000 to 5,000. Then eight years later, it was under 1,000. The industry really started to turn about two years ago. So just saying the business can't get worse I, I was lucky enough, in addition to have the metals industry in Star Fidelity, I had the textile industry, which is a great group to follow, because you follow companies like J.P. Stevens was founded in the 18th century, and uh, West Point Pepperell was founded in the 18th century. Burlington Industries was one of the new companies that was founded in 1904. And these people have been through recessions, depressions, world wars. They've seen it all. There's a great expression in the textile industry. It's always darkest before pitch black. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, now that's a good one to remember, because when business is terrible, it can get considerably terrible. It can get terrible to the power of six. And uh, it, uh, I love those numbers on freight car delivery. You ever watch, I love the show Jeopardy. You ever watch Jeopardy and people come out, they will know those numbers. Remember, they'll know the numbers. And they'll know, you know, what, uh, what country uh, Box uh, took his first vacation in, and they'll know Phil Rizzuto's batting average and what his wife's first name was, and they'll know the stock symbols of Xerox before it was Halloid, or you know, they know everything. And you watch the show, and you feel like an absolute idiot watching the show, because they answer all these questions. But they're really smart. I own this, I've owned this stock before at King World. Right after it, they show Wheel of Fortune. And, they, and what happens is they'll have this word up there, and it'll be TH, and there's a T, and it says, I buy a vowel hitch, I buy a U, you know, to <laughs> buy an I, and, and, it, and you know, they, Vanna spins the wheel and they buy the A and, you know, you feel, you're redeemed by watching the Wheel of Fortune after you know, feeling like an absolute jerk on the uh, Jeopardy game and uh, it's really smart. It, uh, uh, when I rebound to 10, I'll sell. Uh, here's a great rule. Uh, somebody buys a stock at 10 and it falls to 6. They say, if it gets back to 10, I'll sell. Now, I think the math, 4 and 6, I can handle this level of math. I think that's about a 66% return. You ought to buy it. If you think it's going back to 10, you ought to buy the hell out of the damn thing. But they think if it gets back to 10, I'll sell. Now, what you ought to do is never put down a round number. Because I think for the next 26 years, the stock will go between five and nine and a quarter. It'll never get to 10. <laughs> so maybe put nine and eighth or eight and three quarters. But just saying the stock, if it gets back to what I paid for it, this is a very important rule. This is, a very, this is one of the key rules. The stock doesn't know you own it. <laughs> Remember that. You could be a miserable person. You could have, uh, you know, never helped anybody, never done anything right, had 67 spouses, never done anything right. If you own Coca-Cola the last 50 years, it's gone up 300-fold. You could be the greatest human in the world, help Special Olympics, help 
the mentally challenged, help poor people, help AIDS people. If you own Bethlehem Steel, it's lower than it was 30 years ago. It's not your fault. Don't take this personal, you know. <laughs> but people treat stocks sometimes like they're grandchildren or a puppy. I mean, they, 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 think, they think the stock knows who you are. You know, it's, you know, it doesn't work that way. It, uh, uh, let me worry, I own conservative stocks. Uh, I don't have to worry, I own conservative stocks. I remember when Con Ed fell uh, 80%, then tripled uh, Public Service Indiana, went down 90% Gulf States Utilities, Long on Lighting. This may be an oxymoron. We had quality Texas banks that went to zero. We had uh, <laughs> quality New England banks that went to zero. Uh, these were companies that have been around for 150 years, 120 years. Saying I own conservative stocks, I don't have to worry. And I've seen a lot of people, they'll inherit a stock from somebody. They'll say, you know, my mother said, on her deathbed, don't sell the Long Island Lighting. You know, you always wondered, you know, is it, she's going to heaven, or hopefully where she's going to heaven. You know, they talk about a little league game or a vacation or a game of hearts they had. Or imagine talking on your deathbed about Long Island Lighting. And you say, well, you know, <laughs> but you get these stories all the time. And I think your mother would have noticed she wouldn't have sold at 29, but she would she would have noticed they had this little plant that was about six billion over budget. And no one wanted it and uh, wasn't working, and uh, Long Island stopped growing. So maybe she would have turfed it at 22 or got off at 18. She wouldn't have let it go to four. You know. So just because you inherit some stock and it's so-called conservative, like Eastman Kodak fell 75%, IBM fell 75%, don't tell anybody you own a conservative stock. Companies are very dynamic. I don't buy that argument. Uh, here's a very dangerous one. Look at all the money I've lost. I didn't buy it. it uh, People do this all the time. They say, I didn't own Blockbuster, I didn't own Home Depot, I didn't own Toys R Us. I, uh, Eric it was very nice to say some nice things about when I came up here, and Manny has been nice to me. I laid one of my books listed on two pages. In the 13 years I ran Magellan, I listed, uh, I think, about 200 stocks, A through L, on the New York Stock Exchange, that went up tenfold or more, that I didn't own while well, I ran Magellan. I had owned lots of stocks. I listed 200 stocks A through L. I stopped at letter L, and I didn't own any of these shares. They went up tenfold or more, and I was able to do okay with Magellan. And people worry all the time about missing Microsoft, missing Western Digital, missing uh, United Airlines. They spend all their time worrying about stocks they miss. You cannot lose money in a stock you don't own. That's a very important. You have, the only way to lose money is buy a stock, have it go down, and sell it. That's the only way. And I swear that people, that their spouse has to cut out the newspaper in the morning, cut out the C's, and the person will look at the M's, oh my god, Microsoft's up, up three, you know, I had, I was going to buy a thousand shares of Microsoft, I lost three thousand of Microsoft last night while I was sleeping, you know, <laughs> the, uh, you know, I was going to buy seven thousand shares of National Semiconductor at ten, it's now seventeen, I just lost forty-nine thousand dollars on <laughs> National Semiconductor, they do this all the time, they, I mean, they have to cut holes, the block, thank god, Blockbuster finally went away, because it, that would be early in the alphabet, people would always be looking how much they lost on Blockbuster. Uh, I missed that one, I'll catch the next one. That usually does not work. Toys R Us, there was a lot of copycats of Toys R Us. There was Trial World, there was Lionel, there was copycats of Home Depot. Buying the next of something usually doesn't work. It's, uh, it's very bad. It's like buying on dips. I think it's always better to buy from dips. I always thought it was a better rule than buy on dips. <laughs> you may have to explain this to some other people. Uh, this is another technical term you may have to explain after hours what a dip is. At the, they usually refer to it as plurals, dips. I never heard dip. You know, he's a dip, she's a dip. They usually only the plural tense for it. So, so, and it's a gender nonspecific. It, uh, it's usually plural. Dip is never used. Uh, uh, stock has gone up, I must be right. Stock has gone down, I must be wrong. I am convinced that people do this all the time. They buy stock at 10, they buy a little bit of it, it goes to 13. They now say they don't know anything more about it than they knew when they bought it at 10. They have no idea what this company does, but it's gone to 13 now. They take a second mortgage in the house and buy it at 13. The best thing that can happen for us is to go directly from 10 to 4 for these folks. You know. It's going to go to 4 eventually, but it goes to 13 in the middle. They're convinced now they bought 100 shares at 10. Now they buy 20,000 at 13. And uh, all the fact is the stock went from 10 to 13 is it went up. The average movement of a stock in the New York Stock Exchange this century, between its high and its low, has been 50%. The average stock in the New York Stock Exchange. That means the stock started the year 20. Sometime during the year sold 16, sometime during the year sold at 24, might have finished the year 21, might have finished the year 19. The average range of a stock in the year stock exchange is 50% in 12 months, between its high and slow. So stocks go up and down a lot within a year. And say this, 
stock is going up means you're right. doesn't mean a damn thing. So don't buy off on that one. It, uh, that is not a good one. The, uh, avoid long shots. Uh, these are the companies that uh, we have this very technical term for this uh, called whisper stocks. The, uh, everybody familiar with whisper stocks? They're, uh, they're great. Somebody call you up and they'll say, hi, Peter, how's Carolyn's? How's Beth doing? How's Annie? How's Mary? Have you played any golf? And then they'll say, I want to talk to you about international blivet. And uh, the next they'll get, you know, one of those, they'll get a shorter term in those places where they, they have Nordic tracks and they uh, put them away and they don't, they don't have to make <laughs> big rocks into small rocks. They just watch movies and they have Nordic tracks, but they, won't, they will not get these people if they whisper in the phone. And these are always these long shots. You know, these are the stocks that are going to uh, grow hair and uh, make your kid have better spelling and your breath's going to improve and you won't have to iron your pants. You know, it's one of those stocks and they always do everything for you. But they're missing, they don't have any sales yet. You know, that's the missing element of the story. The story is sensation. <laughs> There's no profits here, no sales yet, but my God, if this works, if this works, it's going to be the next Xerox. You know, and, uh, and it's going to help Murr and space and everything. It's a very, very good deal. Now, this is not a long shot. This is a no shot. You have to separate these out. I've tried 30 of these. I have never broken even on a long shot. Never. I've made 25, 30 times my money on some stocks. I never thought about Sally Mae or MBIA or Fannie Mae or some of the banks or Stop and Shop. I'd make 20 times my money, 30 times my money. I had no idea. I thought the stocks were going north. I had no idea. You look back 10 years later, you say, my God, I made a lot of money in this thing. The ones I went into thinking I could make four times my money, I've never broken even. So don't do the long shot, guys. They don't work. It, uh, the, uh, they simply don't work. Uh, and again, if a stock's three and it has huge potential, write down the story, take the stock symbol. If it's going to 300, it's okay to buy it at 15. Check in later. Check in a year later. See if it's still listed. See if it's still get a quote on it. See if they still have any earnings yet. <laughs> But if it's going, write the story down. Some of these work. I haven't heard yet, but maybe they will work. But it's worth tuning in six months later.